Kia ora, I'm Dr. Kirsten Zemke. I'm from the School of Social Sciences. The subdiscipline I do is called ethnomusicology. And so what I study is music, but from a human cultural perspective. And that's why we're in the BA. I find looking at music can tell me so much about how people are feeling. It can tell me how young people are feeling about their bodies, their relationships, their relationships to family and community, their relationships to their mental health and, and depression. It actually gives me a whole insight into what a whole bunch of people are thinking. Today I'm gonna to talk about a few things I've been doing recently about queerness and hip hop. Hip hop at first appears to be very homophobic, um, you know, quite sort of super masculine or, or hyper feminine and looking at some of the queer hip hop artists and that they've really found this music as a space for expression about themselves, about freedom, about their race, about their communities. And so what looks like would be a hostile environment has actually been a very liberating space for a lot of especially young people. One of the hip hop communities I looked at is from New Orleans and it's called Bounce Music. And they are literally the community where twerking came from. It was in the gay nightclubs and it was gay hip hop, but then it spread all around. And now for instance, some of the bounce artists are performing with Beyonce and you know have mainstream sort of success themselves. And I did my research just before Lil Nas X came out. And some people will know he really sort of made it okay to be gay, to be queer, and to do hip hop in the mainstream. But some of the artists I were looking at were sort of the pioneers and the precursors. And uh, Lil Nas X actually has shouted them out and realizes the groundwork that they laid, you know, fighting for their space and the right to be who they are. New Zealand hip hop brought up so much about young people in Aotearoa and their identities and Pacific young people and Maori young people and women and gender and racism and popular music and capitalism. So it ended up, you know, having all sorts of implications. And so I guess what I do, I feel like is sort of a Trojan horse and that it looks like we're just looking at this fun, popular music. But actually what they're learning about is all sorts of anthropological and sociological issues and concepts. Um, and that can be applied to anything. I love seeing some of the work that my students are coming through with um, incorporating music into their other research about, say, a Tongan culture, about hip-hop fashion, about Samoan music, about K-pop is another big thing coming up. I, I hope um, people see my work as a way to engage deeper with music and as a way to tell us about people outside ourselves, people from other regions, people from other cultures, people from other ethnicities, how people make music and how music makes people. <laughs> That's my cheesy phrase. <laughs>